Despite the large variety, for the longest time electric locomotives were only ever built in small numbers. And while in the 1930s and 40s production numbers rose, it wasn't until the late 1950s they began their far and wide spread with one class being particularly successful. While initially the Deutsche Bundesbahn, the Federal Railway of East Germany, planned to introduce only two new electric locomotive classes, one for heavy freight trains, a successor to the German Crocodile E94, and one capable to do everything else, similar to the pre-war class E44, the time for true multi-purpose locomotives had not yet come. During the trials with the E10 prototypes, the gearing aimed at speeds of up to 130 km per hour proved to be hardly suitable for goods trains. Therefore another locomotive class was needed, or rather a variant of the E10 with different gearing aimed at high pulling power rather than speed, leading to the goods locomotive E40, which, apart from the color, looks pretty much identical to the E10. Well, almost identical. More on that later. The class E40 was introduced in 1957, one year after serial production of the E10 began, while the relatively low speed of just 100 km per hour, compared to the 150 km per hour of the serial E10 machines, would have allowed for cheaper motors to be used. It was decided against that, and the same ones as in the E10 were used. This was done to give the E40 some operating reserve, as the goods locomotives were expected to be frequently worked near their official limits and beyond, which proved to be very true. This far-sighted decision also allowed the top speed to be slightly raised to 110 km per hour in 1969, making them more versatile, especially when pulling the occasional passenger train. Production lasted for 16 years, with the final examples being delivered in 1973, speaking for the success of this class. In total 879 examples of the E40, by now reclassified as class 140, were built, making it the most numerous electric locomotive of the Deutsche Bundesbahn, as well as one of the most numerous in the world, at a time long before Traxxas and Vectrons came along, not even taking into account the almost identical class E10. But what are now the differences between the E10 and the E40, besides their color and gearing? It boils down to only the brake system. As the goods locomotive has a much lower top speed, it was equipped with a weaker brake system. In particular, the electric rheostatic brake was omitted altogether, resulting into the only easy to spot difference. On the larger of the two hoods covering the engine room, the electric brake of the E10 requires one additional ventilator per side, while on the E40 the sides are simply closed, at least on most of them anyway. The simpler brake system of the E40 is sufficient for flat track, but not for inclines. Therefore, a small number of E40s received the electric brake after all, and with them also the additional ventilators, known as E40.11 or from 1968 onwards as class 139. Don't be fooled by the term standard locomotive, however, in thinking all of them look the same. Over the years many changes occurred. Some locomotives were already built to a modified design, while others received them during an overhaul, and some of the modifications could change their appearance quite dramatically. The first machines were still painted in the dark bottle green paint, with a rain gutter separating the body from the silver painted roof. They featured proper number plates all around and owner plates on both sides. Originally, the spelled out words Deutsche Bundesbahn, but very soon the cookie shaped logo. The most distinctive early feature, however, are the three large lamps on both ends. In difference to traditional lanterns, which require a transparent red disc to be pushed in front of the lantern, the lower two lamps have a separate red light bulb integrated, which was a novelty at the time. Fairly soon, however, both light colors were separated out into smaller individual lamp housings. Additionally, the top light was replaced by a smaller one too, and the ventilator grills on the body were updated for the first time. In 1959 also the first livery change took place, with the dark bottle green paint being replaced by the lighter chrome green. When the prone to rust metal rain gutters were replaced with smaller rubber ones, the cosmetical separation between body and roof was lost, and the green paint was extended further up with the now grey paint not being visible from the ground anymore. 
Spray cleaners for the front windows made the stepping board and handrails obsolete, but new steps and handles had to be fitted for the socket for double heading and push-pull services. Antennas were added for communication and the large ventilators were updated once again. All this is commonly seen on locomotives with the firstly in 1975 applied paint scheme of ivory and ocean blue or the paint scheme of orient red used on the E40s from 1988 onwards. The final paint scheme came along in 1997 with traffic red and basalt grey. By now an increasing number of E40s was also fitted with much larger square buffers, following several derailments caused by buffer locking. But these are only some of the most obvious changes. It is important to say, however, that not all locomotives received these modifications simultaneously, or even at all, leading to a seemingly infinite amount of possible combinations. Not even to mention further modifications, like different pantographs, different buffer beams or the fitting of automatic couplings to some machines. You would be forgiven for getting the impression every single one of them looked different, even though in reality this isn't true of course. But no success story can last forever. While the E40 saw various modernizations over the long production and lifetime, eventually comes the point where the general design is so outdated and the overall structure so worn out that a large overhaul is just no longer economically viable. And when the end came, it came rather rapidly. While in the mid-1990s both the East and West German railway companies were merged to form the Deutsche Bahn AG, also the first examples of the class E40 were withdrawn. And only a decade later, with many new locomotives now being available, their number had shrunk down to no more than about a third. But the time wasn't quite over yet. What it was intended for them to disappear over the next couple of years, the economy had different ideas. Rising demand for goods brought a good number of them back on track, albeit often only for a short time. This up and down kept going until 2016, when the Deutsche Bahn withdrew them once and for all from service. At that time, however, several examples had already found new work at private train operators, where more than 30 examples are still in service to this day and will probably remain there for many more years to come, while at the same time three examples have already been preserved. An equally long-lasting thank you goes to my channel members Dave Heise, Flip Schwib, Kay Frankly and Lukas Ilskens for securing the future of my channel. If you want to become a member yourself or prefer to tip me a cup of tea on coffee, you can find both links in the video description. I hope you found the spotlight on one of Germany's most important electric locomotives interesting. Feel free to subscribe for more locomotive portraits in the future. What class would you like to see a video about? Until next time, here at Steelbridge Models.